like gaming trends have been moving at an incredible rate lately, just like everything else in our modern world. Before you can even register a new cultural trend in your monkey brain, poof, it's gone. Remember when Among Us was so hot that you could find your government representative streaming it on Twitch? Pepperidge Farm remembers. In the same category is another indie game that quickly rose to prominence and just as quickly fell out of favor with modern fickle audiences. I'm talking about Valheim, of course. Valheim was a cultural zeitgeist that penetrated the hearts and minds of people you would never expect to play survival sandbox games, or any games for that matter. It was a moment in time when it was not surprising to hear Grandma pop a question. You want to join our Valheim server, kiddo? However, I did not join the Valheim frenzy at the time, because I am allergic to trends and Minecraft was still dominating my life. You know what they say though, better late than never. I was finally ready to branch out and find out whether Valheim's meteoric rise was warranted. Is Valheim the best survival sandbox out there or just another overhyped pile of rotten zombie flesh? The only other survival games I have experienced were Minecraft and Vintage Story, which is a video game equivalent of an Elvis impersonator. Shh, they are the same game. But now was the time to leave blocky worlds behind and step into the unknown, the world of Valheim. The very first thing that the game presents you with is making your character, of course, which I can't help to feel is a mistake. The game zooms in intensely on your character and gives off a strong impression of potato graphics. In retrospect, I really enjoyed the art direction of the game, despite generally low fidelity, and I can't help but to wonder how many people were turned off by this initial screen. Regardless, the game has very few visual customization options for your character and nothing else. Next, you are prompted to create a world. After some text flows through your screen talking about something something Odin, something something Great Warrior, something something too long did not read, the game starts and you are dropped off by a badass bird into the meadow's biome. The drop off location is a stone circle with 6 stones for each of the bosses currently available. What follows is a standard affair of collecting some basic resources and crafting your first set of tools and weapons. This allows you to defend yourself from the aggressive creatures and do some basic chores like wood chopping. The boars, the graylings and the necks provide little resistance provided you have a basic weapon. The caveat is that you need to have some food buffs. The two most important resources in the game are health and stamina, and pretty much all actions cost stamina. Fighting, running, jumping, swimming, you get the picture. The game provides you with baseline health and stamina, but it's a pathetically small amount and the only way to increase either is through food buffs. Five. Without food, you're just a little chump ready for slaughter. Regardless, after getting familiar with the basics, it is time to build your first shelter. To do that, you need to build a workbench and make sure it's covered by a roof. This allows you to craft more tools, with the hoe being the most important one. Once the ground is leveled, it is time to build your first shelter, provided you have enough wood for it. Chopping wood is something you'll be doing a lot in this game. And I do mean like a metric ton of a lot. Once you have a shelter up and running and have a nice campfire going with a way to vent out the smoke, you find about the rested buff. Rested buff is probably the most important thing in the game behind food. It substantially increases your health and stamina regeneration. This is when you learn that Valheim is just a buff micromanagement mini game. Buffs are extremely important. The difference between having a cold and wet debuff or having neither and being fully rested is like night and day, no pun intended. Speaking of nights, not only do they debuff you with cold and reduce your visibility, but also substantially increase monster spawn rate and difficulty. This makes nights a something generally one should avoid at all costs in Valheim. In good news, nights can be skipped via a bed, with absolutely no penalty which makes it a no-brainer and they let you set your spawn point to boot. Regardless, your next step should probably be acquiring some armor and better weapons. To do that, you need to hunt. Boars are easy since they are hostile and come right at you. Deer are a bit trickier. They are easily spooked and like to run away at full speed if alerted. Listening to a deer call, then sneaking up on unsuspecting deer and finally nailing him with an arrow was a cathartic experience. Once you farm deer and boar for a little and got a few beehives, it is time to craft better and bigger things. Besides crafting, the benches allow you to upgrade tools and armor. To fully upgrade a weapon or a piece of armor, you need way more materials than the initial crafting cost, which often begs the question, do you fully upgrade your kit or man up and go face the boss? I chose the latter. To summon a boss, you need to sacrifice a few specific items on his altar. 
Needless to say, he went down like a sack of potatoes. Granted, I cheesed him by kiting him with fire arrows, but even when I got hit by him, the damage was minimal. Upon killing him, you are awarded with his head, which you deposit on one of the six rocks at your initial spawn. This gives you your first forsaken power. In Aether's case, it is a 5 minute buff that grants you 60% less stamina drain when running and jumping, which is huge for traversing large distances. It is on a 20 minute cooldown though, but still hugely useful. Aether also drops special antlers that allow you to craft an antler pickaxe, which in turn lets you mine copper and tin. One quickly learns that Valheim is quite a linear game. There are a few tricks that allow you to circumvent this linearity, but it is extremely tedious, often relies on bugs, and is not an intended way to play the game. Speaking of copper and tin, there was time to move to the second biome, the Black Forest. Moving your base into a more convenient location is usually a worthy time investment in my opinion. I started my base from scratch several times throughout my first playthrough. It is during these long build projects that you notice that snapping in this game can be quite finicky. Even after getting used to how snapping functions in Valheim, sometimes you must do some extreme things to snap things together, which can be a very frustrating experience. Black Forest is a significant step up in terms of difficulty. The presence of archers makes your life significantly more complicated. God forbid if they are one star or above. Facing multiple enemies at once is suddenly a huge issue since everything is hostile. While tin and copper are your ultimate goals in this biome, you must start by raiding the local dungeon, the Burial Chamber. Inside these procedurally generated dungeons are the Circling Cores, necessary to progress. Burial Chambers will rock your world. Needless to say, suffering your first L inside of these catacombs is a rite of passage. Recovering your body can vary from it's a few feet away to good luck with that. It is entirely possible to lose your gear in an unrecoverable situation, at least in the short term. In good news, your gravestone never goes away. This might force you to start adapting more cautious playstyle, including using the bow to destroy spawners from afar. Unfortunately, skeletons are highly resistant to pierce damage, so bow isn't really a great option for them. Besides scoring a few circling cores, you can also locate a boss stone inside. It is a wise idea to visit your base frequently to deposit your finds, sleep away the night, get the rested buff, and of course to repair. Walheim has a theme for making you spam the same button repeatedly. If you thought that the skeleton archers were the real menace of Black Forest, that title goes to Trolls. Trolls have an annoying tendency of interrupting your business inside of the Black Forest. They're lean, they're mean, and they do a lot of freaking damage. Kiting them with fire arrows is probably your best course of action. Black Forest introduces a pretty good variety of new monsters, which is a nice change of pace from the meadows. A lot of them will push you to your limits at this stage of the game. This is why it is important to utilize the environment to your advantage. Sometimes you will have to find impassable terrain and bust out a bow, even for skeletons. Once you have enough circling cores, it is time to build a couple of charcoal kilns and smelters. I low-key hate how ugly these look though, they really cramp my style. Charcoal kilns allow you to produce coal and smelters, well, allow you to smelt. Just be warned, the amount of e-spam is about to go through the roof. Poor quality of life is a recurring theme in Valheim. Now that you have a smelter and your first batch of coal, you will need something to smelt, of course. Tin is scattered along the shore and you can mine with your antler pickaxe. Good news is that you don't need an overwhelming amount of tin to progress. What you need an overwhelming amount of is copper. Copper is the second worst grind of Valheim. You need an absolute boatload of copper, and copper, like other metals, is extremely heavy. You will be doing a lot of running back and forth. Once you're back, don't forget to load up your smelters. Now that you smelted some tin and some copper, you can craft bronze. One needs to combine two copper bars and one tin bar, which makes, drumroll, one bronze bar. Wait, who came up with that number? You don't combine two kilograms of copper and one kilogram of tin to get one kilogram of bronze. Where did the other two kilograms go? Conservation of mass, anyone? Yeah, Mr. White. Yes, yeah, science. And now you see exactly why this grind is so painful. I'm guessing there are no metallurgy experts at Iron Gate Studios. Luckily, once you get eight bronze bars, you can craft a bronze axe, which in turn lets you chop down birches. Birches provide you with fine wood, and fine wood is the last component you were missing to build a portal. Portals are awesome. One big fat problem though. While you're allowed to transport any of the materials through your portals, metals are prohibited. And why is that? To make you suffer, of course. Just pray that an angry troll doesn't show up to destroy your portals along with your base. Eventually, you have enough bronze to craft a full bronze set. Not only will you need enough bronze to craft and upgrade your armor, but you will also need it to fully upgrade your base. You will be mining a lot. 
and when you are not mining, you will be fighting off the locals. While you are still working on your gear, it is usually a good idea to grab the ultra requirements for the second boss. You need to visit a couple of Great War spawners to snag some ancient seeds. If Valheim is looking kind of hard now, it gets even harder. You have a chance to spawn raids throughout the game. These events will continuously spawn monsters associated with the event type and get progressively harder the more bosses you kill. And if you wondered whether you can be raided by trolls, you can. Good luck with that one. Eventually, your kit will be fully maxed out and you will be ready to face the Elder. He might just spawn across the ocean, so get sailing. Build a rickety boat that costs you an absolute fortune, jump into your new vessel and get ready to learn. Sailing is intuitive, so you should pick it right up. It is a pretty cool experience at first. Sailing through beautiful landscapes, bobbing up and down in the waves, and trying to catch the tailwind like a badass sailor. Too bad it becomes a chore fast. Eventually, you will make a landfall and immediately build a portal. Dying without a portal now would probably send you back to the Stone Age if you didn't already have materials for another boat. Once you portal back, get your rested buff, eat the best foods you got, and sleep away the night. Next, portal back and sacrifice the right amount of tribute on the altar. And there you go, second boss of Valheim. The Elder felt easier than Eichther, which was already a pushover. His moveset consists of a projectile attack that is easy to dodge behind the four pillars of the arena and a spell that summons damaging roots easily avoidable by moving away. And that's that. The Elder continues the trend of anticlimactic bosses if you're sufficiently prepared. Now, portal back and place his head on the hook. Elder's Forsaken Power gives you faster wood cutting. Thanks, uh, I guess. Jokes aside, it is a useful power after all. It is easy enough to switch into this power when you're ready to cosplay as Lumberjack. On to the third biome, the Swamp. This is another instance where it might be a good idea to relocate your entire base a little closer to the next biome. If you're lucky, you might just find a small meadows island right next to a massive swamp. One huge advantage of building on an island is that most raids cannot trigger here. At this junction of the game, you might find yourself wanting a nicer place and spend a lot more time and effort on building. But don't get ahead of yourself, you will have to sail enough metal to your new base to rebuild the stations and their respective upgrades since that is portal restricted. Luckily, if you destroy the boat, you can bring the materials through the portal and rebuild the boat on the other end, cutting the journey time in half. And before you know it, you will have a dope place. You don't have time to rest on your laurels though. It is time to introduce yourself to the swamp. What can be said about this dark, gloomy and rainy biome? Swamp transition is a real rough one, probably the single biggest difficulty spike in the game. You are constantly wet, which of course reduces your health and stamina regeneration. There is a ton of standing water, so get ready to swim, and swimming is not something Vikings excel at. A ton of bricks is an apt comparison. Plus, water is full of leeches, there are a ton of draugr and blobs everywhere. Half of the stuff poisons, so you better hope you brought your poison resistance mead, which of course you didn't forget to craft and ferment, right? Probably a good idea to stay away from abominations at this stage too. And of course, it would be a real bummer if there's an area without skeletons. Needless to say, there's no shame in dying in the swamp. It's part of the course. Swamp is where you need to step up your game and leverage every single advantage. Bring a good supply of healing meat. Sneaking is a solid option, but prepare to run if spotted. Try to take down Draugr and skeleton spawners scattered all around, preferably from range. Use your hoe to create safe pathing for kiting and retreat. Never get caught without a poison resistance mead. And of course, always have a safe portal location, preferably on the edge of the swamp in a different biome. If you follow these instructions, sooner or later you'll find yourself at a sunken crypt. It is a safe place for a little mini camp with a portal. Once you're done setting up your camp, you can open the crypt with the key that dropped from the elder. Welcome to your next dungeon. Get familiar. You will be spending a lot of time down here, and I do mean a lot. Iron grind is by far the longest and the most brutal grind of Valheim. You need a lot of iron for your gear, weapons, infrastructure, and iron stays relevant throughout the entire game. What you're after are the muddy scrap piles that tend to block a lot of the entrances. More often though, they tend to lead into dead ends. When you break these piles down with a pickaxe, they can drop iron scraps, which you can smelt into iron bars. But the biggest piles of iron scraps and other goodies tend to be in random chests scattered throughout the dungeon. Of course, scraps weigh a ton, so periodically run outside and deposit your load in a chest on top of your crypt. It ain't all smooth sailing though. There are Draugr spawners here too, and that is a big old pile of bad news. 
you might start realizing that it's entirely possible to get yourself into a messy predicament in Valheim. One where gear recovery is, uh, how can I put it, complicated. Perhaps it is time to equip your old gear, you kept it around, right? Around this time, it might be a good idea to switch to a tower shield. I end up having the most success with a tower shield, success being uh, a relative term. Right around this time, you might find sneaking to be a worthwhile pursuit in an aid of recovering your body. With a little patience, luck and a tower shield, you might finally be able to get it back. Of course, crypts don't have infinite resources, so sooner or later you will need to find another one and that means back to the surface. Did I mention swamps are goddamn hard? But don't give up. Sooner or later you will have a decent cadence. Find a new crypt, mine all the piles, loot all the chests, deposit your finds in the chest above the crypt. And when you have a decent amount, bring them back on your ship. Time to work on your carpal tunnel, but at least it is for a good cause, which is incrementally crafting and upgrading your kit. The number of base chores expands with each biome. Starting with Black Forest, you have to grow and propagate crops, which play a crucial role in high-level foods, and boy, do you need those. Right around this time, it is also a good idea to locate your neighborhood-friendly trade NPC named Hoda. He will sell you the most wonderful utility belt that increases your carrying capacity by 50%, a real game changer. If only you knew about it sooner. With better gear and better food, things will start feeling less catastrophic and perhaps even routine. Even abominations won't be so scary anymore, and that's a good thing, because you still have hours of farming left. Once you're all set up on your gear, get sailing to find your next boss. Bone Mask requires a little more setup than other bosses. You need to kill any nearby spawners, you don't want to be dealing with those in the heat of the battle. You need to use your hoe to create as much dry area as possible. Make sure there's a body recovery portal nearby. And finally, eat your best foods and drink a poison resistance meat. With these boxes checked, feel free to sacrifice 10 withered bones on his altar. You should have a million of those by now. And there you go, one ugly, chunky and smelly boy. He spews poison clouds everywhere, but it's nothing a resistance potion can't solve. He spawns adds, but they are all vulnerable to blunt damage. And of course Bone Mass is vulnerable to blunt damage himself. Mace is king. And the cherry on top, his attacks are slow and easy to time. Bone Mass ended up being a pushover once again, a pattern you will notice until the very last boss. While Bone Mass is a little bit of a joke, his power is not. It provides a reduction to slash, blunt and pierce. This reduction is substantial and perhaps a bit overpowered. You are going to need it for our next biome, it will save your ass countless times. The mountains is where things will start to break down a little bit in terms of polish. It's my second least favorite biome and that's not because of its difficulty. If anything, mountain transition felt a lot easier than the swamp. The scariest enemies are the bugs, and I don't mean the organic kind, those come later. Queue up an obligatory sailing expedition. I hope you didn't go sailing during the storm, because you don't want your ship sunk in the middle of the ocean. Once you locate the mountains, establish a small forward base with a portal, and off you go. You didn't forget your frost resistance meat, uh, did you? Because otherwise, the freezing debuff is going to kill ya. You. You'll be fighting the same three enemies. First, we got a roll pain in the ass, aka the drake. Second, we have the wolf, who likes to attack in packs. And third, the extremely tough stone golem. He is not worth fighting for the most part, avoid it at all costs. Bone Mass dropped you a wishbone, which aids in the search of silver deposits. The more it pings, the closer you are. Mountains don't feel that hard, but that doesn't mean dying here is impossible. Far from it. Especially if you forget to reapply your frost resistance mead. Recoveries in the mountains can be tricky. For one, you always need a frost resistance mead on standby or you're not going to make it. Another problem, stamina management. One of the reasons mountains feel so shit. Constantly trying to scale, jump and sprint through the scraggy terrain drains your stamina like crazy. I know stamina management is the whole point of this place, but it just doesn't feel good to idle when you're trying to get places. Platforming just doesn't feel amazing in Valheim, period. But I digress. Once you find a silver vein, feel free to dig it out fully and if you did it right, you might just be rewarded with the entire vein collapsing all at once. A very satisfying feeling, I do declare. Remember when I mentioned dying to bugs? Well, here's an example. I would have been hella pissed if I didn't miraculously survive this fall. Regardless, once you have your silver vein collapsed, it is time to run it all back to your forward base and deposit it in the stash. And then of course, repeat the process several more times. Meanwhile, I hope you've been growing your turnips that you got from the swamp. Wait, you didn't? Better go back and get those, or you will be soft locked from progressing your cauldron. You won't get far without those. 
And now, back to the mountains. Just be wary of stone golems, or you might get chucked down into the abyss. This is where an extra frost resistance meat stashed away in your chest becomes vital. If you don't have one, prepare for bad times. And now, a public service announcement. Outrunning wolves is usually not an option. It might be a good time to hit up your old gear. I hope you learned your lesson and kept it stashed away. Of course, even that won't protect you from the cold. Back to the drawing board you go. Hopefully you got a good chunk of silver already mined, so load it on your ship. Sometimes it makes sense to just over encumber yourself and slowly trudge your way to your destination while periodically throwing away your inventory to regenerate stamina. Once you're all loaded up, take your ship back to your base. And then get ready to spam that E button. And then craft yourself whatever silver gear you can, preferably starting with the wolf cloak, which makes you immune to freezing. With any luck now, you should be able to get your body back and resume your mission. Just be mindful, while your island base is safe, your forward bases can absolutely get raided. Hope you have your poison resistance meat ready. Now, another complaint about the mountains. In general, Valheim does not do a great job with verticality. Janky platforming, bad pathfinding, or the fact that you must be on an even ground with the creature you are attacking. Otherwise, your attacks will not register. You can also experience a wolf gangbang while cruising in the mountains. I hope you have your bone mass power ready, or be prepared to be minced meat. In all seriousness, the silver grind isn't half bad compared to iron and copper. Too bad the game never goes back to using silver for anything else ever again. Once your gear up is up to snuff, it is time to sail to kill Motor, the fourth boss. The tribute to Motor is a little bit more complicated. You need to bring three dragon eggs to the altar and they weigh a fuck ton, which means you have to bring them one at a time. Motor once again proved to be rather easy. I'm pretty sure mine was bugged. Supposedly, the ultra spawn location has a drastic effect on his AI. My motor liked to perch on a mountain and just sit there doing absolutely nothing while getting abused by a barrage of arrows. His ice barrage and his Kamehameha wave are easily dodgeable, and as long as you stay away from his melee range, you are golden. His forsaken power, just like Elders, is extremely situational. It provides tailwind while sailing, which is pretty helpful for long ship voyages, and you're going to need to voyage to your next biome. In a typical fashion, you will probably need to sail to the plains. Disembarking in an easier biome is always a good idea at first. Then carefully walk to the border of the plains and place your forward base over here. You need to create a large fenced area because plains are all about farming and you don't want the locals to know what you're up to. Plains is probably my favorite biome of the game. It is open, it is flat, and it has great visibility. The game has taught you that biome transitions are hell, but in planes, everything is kiteable, everything is controllable, and you can dictate the pace. You also have access to awesome weapons with special effects like Frostnir. With its knockback effect and a built-in slow, it is a great weapon for controlling large crowds. And controlling large crowds is something you will have to do frequently against the fuelings. Isolating enemies one by one is the name of the game in the planes. Of course, if things get hairy, kiting enemies to a neighboring biome is always an option. Not to say that planes can't give you a run for your money, far from it. Even a humble shaman can wreck your shit if you don't bring a fire resistance mead, and god forbid you get hit by one of the tar slimes without any poison resistance. Luckily, the same slimes can also be abused to kill some of the thickest inhabitants of this biome. You have a lot of options inside the planes in terms of combat, and that is an awesome feeling. That's an oscilloscape guarantee. And the best part? Black metal simply drops from fuelings and their chests. Which means no mining and no repetitive dungeons, a breath of fresh air. Black Metal takes a new type of smelter. New smelter, same old E spam. Black Metal farm happens too quickly. Not something you would expect from Valheim, which is kind of a shame because it is the most fun. Instead of extending the farm for Black Metal, Valheim developers had this awesome idea of requiring iron for the new armor set. The weapons all take Black Metal, but the armor takes just plain old iron, which means back to the swamp. At this point, Swamp is a joke, and you have already seen a million sunken crypts. Why Iron Gate? Just why? The other time gate are the crops. You have been keeping up with your farming, right? And if your left finger hurts from spamming E, feel free to use a stack breaker to help you with the harvesting. There are two new crops, barley and flax. Barley goes into a windmill to make flour, and flax goes into a spinning wheel to make linen thread. Linen thread is the second biggest time gate of your plane's adventure. Plains is more about farming than interacting with the biome itself, which is a real miss in my eyes. Long after you're done with all other business, you're still waiting on your crops. I spent more time AFKing than actually playing the game. There's also fishing as an alternative to AFKing, and it produces some of the top tier foods. It is a shame then, that fishing in Valheim isn't a very chill activity and requires quite a bit of attention, which makes Netflix and chill not really an option. 
Regardless, you are rocking the best plane's armor and the best plane's weapons, so it is time for the fifth boss. So get on the boat and sail to the nearest boss altar. Yagluth requires 5 fueling totems, which you might not have at this time, so raiding a nearby fueling village is an option. Just try not to get cocky and overpull half of the camp with the wrong forsaken power equipped, or you might have a bad time. Once you have your 5 totems, go ahead and summon the boss. Yagluth is straightforward. He has a couple of high damaging moves that are easy to dodge. And if that wasn't easy enough, there are also pillars to get yourself plenty of rest to regenerate health and stamina. It is a good idea to have a fire resistance mead rolling though. And if you are not habitually packing healing mead, what are you doing with your life? Bone mass power doesn't do anything here, most of his damage is magical. Another boss fight, another joke. Speaking of magical damage, Yagluth power offers resistance to fire, cold and lightning damage which can be situationally useful. Regardless, you done did it viking, just one more boss to go in the last biome. The Mistlands is where I feel a lot of the game's poor design choices are amplified beyond tolerable. I will come out and say it, I hate the Mistlands, by far my least favorite biome of the game. Let's break it down. Mistlands generate far from your initial spawn point, so get ready for a 20 minute sailing session. This is where Motor's Tailwind power is hella useful. And you better hope you brought some black metal with you, or you will be soft locked out of the progression, so get ready for another round of sailing. The concept of this biome revolves around a mysterious mist. This mist is a permanent fixture, limiting visibility to almost nothing. You can craft a magical wisp that pushes the mist away around your character, but the range on it is dreadful. Furthermore, you can build static wisp torches, they push away the mist as well, but do a mediocre job at it. I am not sure if the intended design is to cover every square inch of this biome with a wisp torch or just to suffer. Get ready to be blind, lost and confused a lot. Next, the inventory pressure really starts to get intense. There are dozens of new items and your inventory is getting smaller and smaller as you are forced to carry more stuff with each passing biome. On top of that, you can't equip the wisp and the carrier belt at the same time. This is a huge deal because without the wisp, you are pretty much blind and without your belt, you lose half of your carrying capacity. It's a magical ball of energy that flies around. How does it prevent you from wearing a belt? Bruh. Mistlands also introduces a new neutral race who you immediately need to attack because they possess an item that is central to the entire Mistlands progression. Why can't I trade with them instead? Around this time, I must admit to installing mods. My patience was wearing thin. I disabled portal restrictions because I didn't feel like sailing back to get black metal. I installed a mod that gave me separate inventory for my armor and utility items and bumped my inventory space by another row. Why the inventory space is not expandable in Valheim is beyond me. Another mod allowed me to equip the belt and the wisp at the same time. I get really annoyed at trying to micromanage my food buffs, so I installed a mod that removed the magnitude penalty over the food's duration. Following, a mod that let me craft from all nearby chests, which is a total godsend. I was using the clock mod pretty much from the very beginning, knowing the time of day is so crucial in Valheim and there is no real way to track the time at the moment. At this point in time, I felt like I knew Valheim well enough to know that I would never play another minute of this game without these mods, even in a brand new playthrough. In good news, the modding community is robust and you can easily customize your experience. Finally, I seriously contemplated installing Mist Be Gone or these Misty Balls. Mist Be Gone removes the mist completely, and these Misty Balls allows you to tweak a Wisp's radius for better coverage. I did not end up using either because I wanted to get that dev approved experience, but you better believe that they will be in my rotation if nothing changes about the Mistlands in the future. The mist can fuck right off. It does make the biome a lot more challenging, but getting lost in trying to navigate the verticality of this biome virtually blind is not my idea of fun. Your mileage may vary. To progress in Mistlands, one needs to visit the local dungeon, the Infested Mine, easily the best part of Mistlands. It is the most diverse dungeon of the game. The point of the dungeon is twofold. Black cores get pretty much every single crafted station that allows you to produce Mistlands level gear. Furthermore, Seal Breaker fragments allow you to craft an item which unlocks a door to the last boss. The other piece of the progression puzzle is a sap one can extract from the magical roots. Once you have both, you can build an Eiter refinery. Good luck finding a place for it though. The urban sprawl of your infrastructure gets intense. Every single biome introduces new crafting stations and other crap that is necessary for the progression. Your base will be stuffed to the brim. Look, this place is not all bad. Mistlands are gorgeous. In those rare mist-free areas, you can really appreciate the art direction of this biome. It is epic. I quite dig all the new enemies as well. 
Iron Gate has clearly put a good amount of effort into this biome. For example, there's a whole new system of magic ripe for exploration. Unfortunately, it requires a complete retooling of your character. Seems a bit weird that magic isn't introduced a little earlier to ease you in. At this point, I wanted to finish the game with my current playstyle and didn't bother with magic, but it's cool to have new options and by all accounts it's very powerful. It's a real shame that Mist ruins the overall experience though. I was so fed up with Mistlands that I ended up not bothering with gear progression at all. I just crafted the seal breaker and whatever else I could with the refined Eiter I had left. It doesn't help that a lot of gear takes iron for some goddamn reason. Not silver, not black metal, the penultimate armor takes iron. Who are the odd wizards who came up with this one? At this point, I just said screwed and went for the last boss. Perhaps my gear wasn't up to snuff, perhaps it is my inexperience with the fight, or the dreadful mist, but the fight took me over an hour to complete. A nice cherry on top of the Mistlands shit pie. I think the expectation for this fight is to spam with torches to be able to see. Too bad they get destroyed by the action, so either you continuously replant them or just do with zero visibility. Blocking or parrying the queen seems pointless because her attacks push you far away from her. By the time you cover the gap, she's already in the next swing animation. That leaves dodge rolling. If you weren't dodge rolling before this, better learn quickly. If that wasn't enough, she has a ranged attack, a melee attack, a gap closer, a disengage and she summons adds. The fight is cool as hell, but the sheer length makes it feel like a slog. In the absence of fog and much slower ad rate, this could have been a more enjoyable experience. The only way I could even kill her is by abusing a small entrance to her lair. This allowed me to take down the adds, regen health and stamina, and wait for the bone mass power, which helped a lot when it was up. Clearly, I could have done things way cleaner and wore better gear. I don't want to sound like this level of difficulty is a problem, especially because she's the final boss at the moment. There will be other bosses after her, but for now, she is the ultimate test. When she dies, she drops a couple of placeholder items for a future biome. You get to place her head on the stone, and the game basically ends here. I'm tired, boss. So what do you think about Valheim? Look, despite my issues with Mistlands, the overall game is brilliant. Let's talk about the good things. The combat is fun and snappy. There are a variety of weapons, ways to approach combat, and use of the environment to your advantage. The enemies are varied and always keep you on your toes, and each biome has a unique feel to it. The world feels huge, with plenty of exploration opportunities and places to go, and the building is robust enough to produce some stunning results, if one chooses to focus on that aspect, of course. The game has a ton of content for the money. I spent over 70 hours in my first playthrough and that is trying to rush the game at times. If you take your time and explore everything the game has to offer, there are easily over 100 hours worth of game here. Of course, there are some bad elements here as well. The game is quite linear. You move from biome to biome, boss to boss, crafting tier to crafting tier. There is not a ton of flexibility in the way you can approach the game. You can certainly skip some gear and enter some biomes a little earlier than recommended, but that only goes so far. Mostly because progression is intrinsically tied to killing bosses. Valheim is also quite grindy, and this is coming from me. Copper and iron immediately come to mind. However, stuff like wood chopping, smelting metals, and general homesteading are not far behind. There is a relatively new world setting that allows you to turn up the resource rate in the game. I would go as far as to advise new players to play on the 2x setting. It will probably be a better experience. I feel like the Mistlands need a bit of a rework. The current iteration of the Mist is just a bit too oppressive for my liking. Lowering the amount of Mist, increasing the Wisps radius, or making the Wisp torches remove fog completely are some of the ideas floating in my head. Finally, the stamina drain when jumping is a little too punishing. Being in the mountains and the Mistlands really accentuates this issue. You will be spending a lot of time standing still, waiting for stamina to regenerate, and that is no fun. Moving to ugly tier. Oh boy, let's talk about quality of life issues. Why is there no button to fully load a station? Spamming E hundreds of times is tedious and bad for your carpal tunnel. There are no dedicated slots for armor and consumables, making inventory management unnecessarily tedious. Speaking of tedious, each biome introduces dozens of new items with uses all throughout the game, which means dozens of chests and hours of digging through them. The carrying capacity without the belt is just painful. Find me a modern game that has durability and doesn't have a repair all button, I dare you. Yes, there are mods that fix all of that, but the game should respect my time and my wrist health. Please don't go the Bethesda route by letting modders fix your issues. And finally, the bugs. It is frustrating to be constantly forced to find even ground when fighting, otherwise you miss every attack and whether you are above or below doesn't seem to matter. Next, it is probably a good idea to fix your boss AI. Killing motor without him fighting back sours the experience. 
there is the weird shot out of the cannon bug. You might think it was a one-off, but it happened many times. I don't think I ever died to it, but I certainly came very close. This is an early access title, technically, so I will let these slide. But they do not leave a good impression. Anyway, that's Valheim in a nutshell. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Go ahead and pick it up. You won't regret it. Just don't be ashamed to install mods to fix some of the nagging issues and you'll have a good time. Well, if you don't mind doing a bunch of naked corpse runs. I do get the hype behind Valheim, although I'm a little surprised with its appeal to a more casual player with how grindy and punishing it can be. Is it the best survival sandbox game of all time? I will let the devs finish their vision before I'm ready to make that verdict. And with how slow Iron Gate pushes updates, that might take another Another 5 years. That means for now, the search for the best survival sandbox game of all time continues. If you're still here, I love you. Don't forget to do all that YouTube stuff. There are plenty of other games to explore in my favorite genre. Do let me know if I'm sleeping on a game in the comments, but for now, Oscilloscape is beaming out.